bistable circuits. Its behavior, a bistable circuit is a fundamental digital building block with two stable states. It is widely used in memory elements such as latches, flip-flops and registers. The simplest bistable circuit can be constructed using two cross-coupled inverter. Okay, so this is one simple example of a bistable circuit that is the cross-coupled inverter here. You see here how uh, this inverter is working. Inverter works like whatever input will be given, its opposite is the output. For example, if you take logic 0 as input, the output would be inverted of the uh, in, uh, input that is it would be logic 1. Okay, It is just the inversely proportional to the input. So here in this cross-coupled inverter, what its functioning is, one inverter is given back to the output and the output is fed back with the inverter to the input in order to uh, give the same response. Okay, So this is the functioning of the cross-coupled inverter. In this configuration, output of inverter 1 is connected to the input of inver inverter 2 as shown here and output of inverter 2 is connected to the input of inverter 1. So with this, the, with the conclusion we could be coming that VO1 is equal to VI2 because uh, this output and in, uh, inputs of an inverter would be same and VO2 is equal to VI1 since those two are connected. Okay. Next, the voltage transfer characteristics of this uh, cross-coupled inverter. This graph is mentioned here. You see here. Since we have two inverters with the different operations, so this curve is not is familiar to you all. So here we have seen this in the CMOS inverter DC characteristics. This curve. Okay. So this is VO1 VI2 and this is VI1 VO2. So this is for the this inverter. But here we have one more cross-coupled inverter which is you know, which is given back to from the output to the input. So that's why we would be having one more curve here where we are having two stable points. One is uh, this point and this point and the in, uh, intersecting point is unstable. Okay. So since the uh, intersecting point is unstable, it's uh, if you compare it with the energy graph, it would be at the highest state. Okay. Whereas stable and in the stable states, it would be at the lowest stage. Okay. So this is the voltage transfer characteristic of a cross coupled inverter. So you see here, the voltage transfer comes VTC of both inverters can be plotted on the same graph as shown in the figure. The intersection points indicate possible operating points of the circuits. Okay, so these in intersection points are which are unstable, we could be considering it as some operating points. So there are three intersection points, two of them are stable and one is unstable. Okay, stability analysis at stable points, inverter gain is less than one. That is, we have only small disturbances DK. At unstable point, inverter gain is greater than 1, that is the disturbances are amplified, okay. So, yeah, that's uh, that, that was it for uh, cross-coupled. So, we have one more important concept under this uh, inverter only, that is CMOS 2 inverter bistable element, okay. So, this concept is very important. So, here you see here, the figure below shows the circuit diagram of a CMOS bistable element constructed using two cascaded CMOS inverter, okay. So this is a this is a cascaded connection here the these, these two are the connections of inverter only okay based on the cross coupled using cmos implementation they have done it that is this is one inverter okay where the output of this inverter is given to the input of the next inverter and here this input of this inverter is given to the output of this inverter okay based on this connection only the connections are made using cmos implementation two inverter bistable element these inverters are connected in a positive feedback loop. The output of the first inverter is the input to the second and vice versa. Okay, so this is connected in a loop here. This configuration creates a system with two stable states and one unstable state. As shown in the graph here, this configuration would be having the connection of two stable and one unstable states. So in the unstable operating point, both outputs at the intermediate are at the intermediate voltage level. At this condition, all four transistors that is two NMOS and two PMOS transistors are in the saturation region. Okay. In the unstable point, in the unstable state, you should be keeping in mind that all the transistors would be in the saturation region. This results in the maximum loop gain of the system and the operating point is highly sensitive to the, even the smallest perturbation. Okay. So this point is referred as the meta stable state. Okay. So this is with reference to the uh, each inverter, how the they are uh, having the inverse characteristics, okay, the VOH and VOL point. In this one possible time domain response of the output voltages when the circuit is initially biased at its, at its unstable operating point. Okay, when, uh, when we see the unstable state in this point, 
how the inverter would be working like it is mentioned in this graph here okay at unstable operating point how the graph would be looking like with respect to the two output voltages okay vo1 and vo2 okay so key takeaways from this uh, uh, inverter cross coupled inverter that is the cmos two inverter bistable element is fundamental to binary state storage the meta stable point is unstable and cannot retain a state in the presence of noise the positive feedback of this uh, under the cmos inverter ensures the rapid convergence to a stable logic level the stability would be very high when there is positive feedback this circuit is the basis for sram cells latches and flip flops okay so these were the key takeaways under this uh, cross coupled bistable cmos inverter so hope you understood this and uh, we would be concluding this video here okay so that's all guys do support us like share subscribe to our channel in the next video we are going to discuss with the sr latch circuit okay so that's all guys thank you